Now, when God started making me understand wisdom, and when I started going in the journey of wisdom, I began to see the big issue with a lot of us, myself inclusive, a lot of Christians, a lot of people. There is nothing as, you know, terrible to have a pastor as an anointing but doesn't have wisdom. Nothing as terrible to have a good wife but doesn't have wisdom. Nothing as painful to have a very nice husband but he's actually a fool. Remember the case of Naba. None as great as having a great president in a country who has great political sagacity, but doesn't have wisdom. Because wisdom is the ingredient that brings understanding, insight, and foresight to happen. When you see yourself complaining about your situation, either your marriage, either your work, either your finances, it is not that you don't have enough job. It's not that you are not paid enough. It is because you don't have wisdom. And if you, if you, either you don't have wisdom or you have not entered into the wisdom of God. Because wisdom is the stability. That's what Isaiah told us. Wisdom actually brings stability. It actually brings stability. And I will explain to you when we contrast the two kinds of wisdom. Historians said about Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ was completely panic proof. And I think, I don't know how it can happen. I mean, those neurologists will be able to explain how someone can actually not have the fear, fright, and flee situation. So Jesus was like that. When they were trying to arrest him, he said, Whom seek ye? The reason is Jesus made a very important statement. He said, Wisdom is justified of our children. And when they looked at Jesus' life, his apostles, they say, where's come this man, this wisdom? Have not been to school. Paraphrased. As so you can see, wisdom is an impactation. It's not academic. It's not intellectual. It's not theoretical. It's not books. And because Jesus had wisdom, when he was sending the apostles to the world, he gave them two only very two strong commands. He said, number one, be wise as serpents. And I'll explain to you when I talk about the devilish wisdom. Actually, everything about Satan and all his wisdom belongs to God. And then harmless as dove. Actually, the embodiment of the wisdom and the character of God is the Holy Ghost. The embodiment of the wisdom in quote of God without the character is the devil. And so he said, that is what he gave them. And when Paul was advising the efficient church, he says, walk circumspectively as wise, not as fools. When Jesus' disciples were going to face persecution in Luke 21, and when he was about to leave them in the world, he gave them just this advice. He said, don't premeditate on what you will speak. Don't plan your, your, your brief. Don't check for your lawyers. I am going to give you a wisdom and a mouth that none of your adversaries shall be able to gainsay or refute. And if you look at every, everywhere, all the people who have demonstrated God's wisdom, look at a person like Daniel. They said in the days there was light shown. Whenever there was a mystery, whenever there was an enigma, whenever there was a riddle, Whatever well, there was a dream, then you called Daniel, light shone. And actually, I'm so puzzled that Daniel was put head of magician, astrologers, child. And these were people deeply in the occult. Now, because his wisdom shone. And so, if there is anything primarily, you and I, as children of God, should desire is the spirit of wisdom that comes from the spirit of God. 